Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, and today I'm going to work later on, and then tomorrow I'll probably upload this video. So I just got here, and um, I'm going through the castings and cocoons and everything that I sifted from my breeder bins over here. So I took my breeders and I sifted it. And I have the breeders over there waiting to reset them. But this stuff, this is what I put here on these shelves, on these bins that go over here. So before anything else, those of you that are new here, press that subscribe button if you like content about worms and all the other crazy things I do. <laughs> um, go check out my other worm channel, The Composting Worm Lady. I'd love to reach a thousand by the end of the year. So I try to link anything down below my Amazon store. You know, you can use Amazon to shop for your things. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but they do give me a small commission. So I'm really grateful for that. Every little bit counts, guys. Every little bit. Let me tell you, it takes money to operate something like this. Not too bad, though. This is why I always say just try to use what you have, you know, like in the fall here. The amount of leaves that I have outside is unbelievable. So I try to use them, but there's a method to use that. I just don't take the leaves dry and throw them in a bin. So um, I have videos on that, but as the fall approaches again at the end of this year, then I'll do an updated video. So anyway, how are you all doing? Thank you for all your orders, people that have ordered. I do um, keep an eye on the tracking believe it or not I do every single order <laughs> just to make sure they get there because as a worm mama it just gives me peace of mind <laughs> now I don't know I don't count how much I'm putting in here I just go according to the weight whatever's comfortable for me because castings or you know bedding like this um, especially finished castings it can get very heavy so I put as much of the stuff in here that I feel comfortable just um, easily lifting because the last thing I want to do is like when I'm resetting these things just hurt my back so yeah we don't want to do that so that's what's going on today so for all the new people here and maybe someone who doesn't know I'm a Cuban my family's from Cuba so I love to listen to Cuban music besides all the rock I listen to so there's a new uh, playlist. I think I have it public on my channel. It's called A Lo Cubano. And it's basically more modern Cuban music. So, And it's like, you know, it's fast and loud. and You know, just how uh, we Cuban people are. <laughs> so if you want to listen to it, I'm pretty sure it's down below in some of my playlists. So it's music, you know gets me pumping in here gets me going so slowly I'm just working my way up so I start putting the cocoon bins here and I work my way up see I put arrows because <laughs> I'm a visual learner and I just have to so at the end of resetting these I'm just gonna cover them wet them down cover them and then um date them date them V date them oh my gosh I'm so bad at dating you know <laughs> I trust my own instincts by looking at them, but to be a better example for you all, especially ones that are beginning, I should date them. I'm just so bad at dating, I keep forgetting. That's all right. That's all right. We, we good. We're all right. So people ask me if I only feed them chow. No, I do give my breeders like food scraps. I see these. These, let's see. These guys haven't gotten one. So, and I do use shredded paper. So I'll put that in there and I let them enjoy it. You know, I know people that only feed chow, and that's okay. You just do what you want. But I like giving them a little diff I like giving them different things because I think that their diet um, benefits from having diversity and, and different types of foods, you know, different nutrients and things. Plus, they love it. And it's an easy way to see, like, how many worms you actually have. You put something like that in there, and 
within like you know four or five days you come and look and they're all going to be like congregated around there you'll be like oh okay i got you know it's also an easy way to find babies because the babies are so little that sometimes you know you can't see them so you put something like that in there and then you go back and you'll see how many you actually got this is amazing stuff now this by far is not finished you can tell by seeing all the brown spots finished castings looks like kind of like this like really black so that's what's up today let me show you my new little bigfoot thing over here well there he is i was gonna put him in my garden but then i thought i don't know maybe he'll get weathered i thought he'd be good with harvey over here so yeah i love bigfoot bigfoot's my thing so today i wanted to reset some of these bins because it's been a few weeks but i noticed that the bedding is not as dry as i've wanted it to be it's still a little bit on the wet side so i'm just gonna have to keep like fluffing it up and uh today's thursday so maybe maybe saturday you know i never know how long this is gonna take to dry out it's, you know, it just makes it so much easier to harvest when it's not moist. Ah! Oh my gosh, this one almost went flying. And it's like, ah, it's loaded. Look, it's loaded with worms. I would have had to pick them up from the floor and deeply apologize to the babies. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um not as dry as I want so I'm just gonna keep fluffing it every day and until it gets to how I want it because if I try to force it oh guys it'll just be a giant mess so yeah I'm gonna just let them dry another day or so so today's Thursday I'll check them tomorrow and if they're dry enough tomorrow I'll do them tomorrow if not I'll do them on Saturday so let's check on the bin that has the um, the composting thing going. Remember, I'm just using this one for composting. This is like the first one I created. The paper's still damp. And ee, we have loads of castings. See all the castings? Yeah. Those are castings and they're doing well. They're eating the paper. Look, banana's almost gone. They're over here all by the smushiness. Hi, guys. So since they're happy there, I'm just going to put them back. But look, people say to me, um, how do I get my red wigglers so fat? It's all, it has to do with two things, I believe. It has to do with moisture and food. So I give them, I make sure they're properly um, moisturized, you know, with wet, because they'll absorb that water. See the bulging clitellum on a red wiggler? And then, you know, you got to give them food that's fattening, like worm chow, grain, stuff like that. So this is a little dry. So be careful feeding um, anything like rice or potatoes. I wouldn't mix it in because it, it can heat up your bin very fast. I would do stuff like that only on the surface so you could keep a close eye on it. And then if something goes wrong, you can easily just scoop it out and remove it. But they're doing well. I'm going to give them some chow and we're gonna, I'm going to wet it down. So as I'm wetting them and putting the worm chow down, I do see some mites. They're not um, horrible in amounts, but I'm going to do some troubleshooting just in case, you know. So what I do is I take diatomaceous earth. <coughs> Excuse me, it's allergy season. Make sure it's the food grade kind. And I sprinkle it on the surface of the bin. I don't wet it anymore. And then I rub it all on the edges because they walk everywhere. So then I cover it and I leave them alone. 
mites are part of the natural composting you just you just can't you can't get rid of them you never will they're just there so I'm gonna get some more and put it on the surface of the newspaper so here I have more so this is just troubleshooting because it's better guys to do something like this and avoid a giant problem than wait for it to like manifest into something huge so that's one of the best tips um, diatomaceous earth the food grade one because and I tell you food grade because there's another one that's not food grade and it's some kind of chemical and I don't know I don't know what they do with it I just don't recommend it um, it's better to avoid a problem than to have it like turn into something big and then it's gonna be a bigger a bigger job for you. so let's check on one of my giant tubs now I have six tubs of red wigglers Essenia fatida and as you can see, they have bedding, but they have paper and shredded cardboard and, you know, oh my gosh, look. Oh, I broke it. The avocado was planting itself. <laughs> oh my gosh, I killed the avocado. Oh, well, let's put it back and see what happens. <laughs> now just leave these guys here. So this is like, this is like how I do a starter colony. You got to like just put everything in here. And if you put different types of things in here with proper moisture and food, the worms will thrive. Look at them. So I have six of these and I rotate them according to harvesting. And then at the end of the seat, now my goal is to be able to sell to start a colony year round. But in order for me to do that, I have to make sure that I rotate these tubs properly because they need a chance to like reset and breed and lay more cocoons. So that's that's the goal. But you know, I give them everything because like I told you earlier, just different things, diversity in their diet and their environment, it's just better for them. I mean, I can't imagine eating corn all the time. That's it. Only corn. You know, they're living creatures. And we need to treat them with um, the same kind of care that you would anything else, you know. And over here. Now, sometimes the paper's dry on the surface. I just wet it down. And I mix it in. That way it keeps getting wet and they keep working at it. So, but they're doing well. They're doing well. This one is starting to like come back because I had to reset it. So I'll bring you to the other bin I have on the other side of the house and I'll show you how I reset a bin. It's just a matter of organization and just doing it. <laughs> So these are my other bins on the other side of the house. Eventually, when my daughter moves out again and gets all her stuff out of here, because this room is like her storage, I'm going to take over. But I have enough room to do these three bins in here, and it's comfy. So this is what I'm telling you. So this colony is already, like, ready to be shipped going. I fluff it up. I give it oxygen. So you move it over here. Now here is where I do the reset. Here, I took some of this and added here a little bit. And then I start adding shredded paper, shredded cardboard. I wet it down really good because the worms like it like that. And I fluff it up to give it some air. And over here, I start sprinkling chow just to get them excited, you know? Especially the chow I make because it has uh, sweet things in it. That's what they love. And this is how I reset. Now over here, I will give them food scraps because I'm not going to harvest this to sell. Only that part. So I do give them food scraps here. And over there, I still give them chow. I don't let them starve, you know. And this is how I reset a bin. And then before you know it, this 
it's gonna look like this. And I do that with all my bins. I have three here and three on the other side. Now this one, I had put paper, so I wanna see how they eat it. And as you can see, red wigglers love paper. They do, they love it, love it, love it. And look at that, they love to congregate under it. So this, this starter colony is also ready. So if you were to buy a starter colony, I'd go like this and just, you know, sell it. Um, I don't know how many cocoons, I don't know how many worms, you know, people who ask that, they don't know what a starter colony is. And I'm telling you, you can never count them or anything like that. It's just not how a colony works. It's, it's a living ecosystem and you know, you just, you get everything. They're doing good though they're doing good i do give them chow because they love it and i keep their paper there because they love it and then this one is the same thing this one's just getting started also like i'm bringing it back and look how many babies oh my gosh that's amazing i mean look at this oh there's a big one it's amazing. So if you all want your red wiggler starter colony, go on my website. TheGardenAndWormLady.com Now these beds, all of mine, they have no blue worms mixed in or any other type of worm. This is just pure Asenia fatida. Red wigglers are the most easy worm to raise. And they are the most forgiving and they're calm. That's what I love about them. Their temperament, it's they're relaxed. They don't get nutty. Even though every once in a while you'll see one wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. But, you know, as far as their normal behavior, like how they act, no, they're, they're the good ones. <laughs> so I'll bring you back, guys, when I have to do these i was hoping to do these with you today but i just don't feel it's the time and i gotta trust my own instincts so we'll probably be back hopefully saturday to get this done and um i'll bring you with me how do you feel about going live i think i should go live i think so that'd be fun right <laughs> well guys like and subscribe and i'll see you all next time take care